I'm delighted to be with you here again. It's Venturate. And I want to ask you a question. Do you think that it's possible for you to become wealthy? Also, do you think that it's possible for you to become not just wealthy, but to be wealthy and happy? That's an important question. You see, when we talk about wealth, um, we have various pictures that come to our mind. The word wealth is somewhat similar, but by similar I mean it draws on various controversial opinions and, and views like the word success. It's very subjective and it can be measured by both subjective and objective standards. But do you believe that you can become wealthy? Have you considered that question well enough and deep enough? Have you pondered on that long enough? You see, most of us have never considered or cannot even imagine ourselves being wealthy. You know, when we talk about the word millionaire, a picture comes to our mind. Um, I don't really like that word particularly because I think it's somewhat confined so many people to remaining where they are and refusing to take that first leap. But also, for those who have found themselves in that group, it's also kept them in what I call the middle class way of thinking, you see, and on the journey to financial wealth, freedom and riches, there should be a stopping point, which is when you become a millionaire, but it shouldn't be where you stop and rest and stay for the rest of your life. It should simply be maybe a, a short period where you stop um, and then you keep moving. But have you thought about becoming a millionaire? Have you thought about becoming wealthy? wealthy and happy, but also rich. Now, did you know that there are only two ways of making money? To become wealthy, to become rich, to become a millionaire, to become a billionaire, whatever that might be, to become even a decamillionaire. I think that even sounds more interesting than the word millionaire, decamillionaire. To become all of that, you're going to have to acquire money. But there are only two ways of making money. Now I can imagine you already know the answer to that, but for those um, who may not know, let me explain what I mean by that statement. There are just two ways to make money. The first way is what the majority of people do for money, to earn money, and that is simply people working for money where you exchange your time um, for money. You go to a job and you're paid a you know, salary, you're paid a wage, you're paid a commission, um, or perhaps it's a business. The business generates an income, but it's based on people working for money. That's the first way, and that's what we're taught to do all our lives. But that is the distinction this is where we have a distinction between those who are wealthy and those who are not. The second way of making money and the smarter way of making money is money working for money. And this is where we have a separation between the masses. You see, the average person only knows about making money by working for money. That in itself um, is not wrong. But it has a number of drawbacks and disadvantages, one of which is that you're having to exchange your most important asset, which is your time, for money. And it's unleveraged. And by unleveraged, what I mean by that is you cannot do much more than what you give in time. You give your time, you give your energy, you give your effort, you give your intellect, you give your presence. You have to be physically there. And there's so many hours in a day but also there's so much one person can do. And unfortunately, whilst your intellect and your wisdom helps you um, work smarter and work helps you achieve much more than physical labor, it's still limited. It's limited in the fact that if you work for money, all you can do is continue to add layers, layers and layers of money. So working for money leads to what I call addition of wealth. On the other hand, if you learn the wealthy strategy and the rich strategy, which is 
to have money, work for money. And what you now have is an opportunity whereby you can leverage your money by having and by also doing more with less. You see, the key to wealth and the key to riches is not really tied in what you do. Think about this. The key to wealth is not really tied in what you do. Because you can have two people doing the same thing, but one person is doing it slightly differently. It's doing things in a specific way. Not just doing things, doing things in a specific way. Now I like to use the difference between effectiveness and efficiency. Efficiency um, is doing things right. And in many cases, managers are viewed as, you know, efficient. Effectiveness, on the other hand, is doing right things. And leaders are normally considered, considered to be um, effective. If you want to become wealthy, you have to become effective, not efficient. It's not about trying to manage your time and work longer hours. It's not about trying to um, choose the time in the day, getting to work quite early before anyone arrives and working longer. You have to. That is all efficiency. That is you just trying to get more from the time you have. If you want to become wealthy and rich and happy, you have to become effective. You have to learn how to have money work for money. Until you understand that concept, unfortunately, you be trading your most important asset, which is your time, for money. And the disadvantage of that is simply that many of us exchange the best part of our life when we have the best health, we exchange that working for money. And when we've acquired some little money, we get older. We're not as healthy, we're not as strong as we used to be, obviously because of age. And in so many cases, you find a lot of people now exchanging their wealth to buy back health. Now, you've got to get smarter than that. And the best way to do this is to start where you are, you can start working for money, but the key thing is as soon as you start acquiring money, you must learn to take a portion of what you earn and put it to work. Put some overalls on your money. If you've been to a factory, you know in most factories, if you go into like a blue collar factory, most of the workers wear overalls. You must put overalls on your money and send it to work. Let it be like a hunting dog that goes out and finds the catch for you and brings it back home. You must take a portion of what you earn. That then becomes what we call your golden goose. And you protect that goose. You feed it, you nurture it, you care after it, or you care for it rather. And with time, the goose will start to lay eggs. And the more it continues to lay eggs, the more you now have a lot more geese. Now, the more geese you have, the more you can produce more eggs. And that cycle continues until you get to a point where you now have your money working for you. And now you no longer have to work for money. Now you can start to acquire, acquire more assets. Now I started by saying something, and I want to conclude with this statement, but I started by saying that if you're working for money, then you're simply adding wealth. You see, with the second method of working of earning money, which is money working for money, what you're doing is you're multiplying wealth. Money working for money applies the concept that Albert Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world, and that is compound interest. You see, by working and taking a portion of your money and putting that portion to work for you, and it starts to produce money, what you're doing is you're multiplying your wealth. And in a short period of time, what you find is that your net worth has increased far in excess compared to someone who is earning the same amount as you, but was working for money. So if you want to become wealthy, if you want to become rich, if you want to become happy, you must stop. At some point in your life, you must stop working for money and have money work for you. And then now... Rather than working for necessity, which is you need the money, you can now work from a place of joy, 
place of passion, a place of excitement, love. You can walk from a place of peace because you would have moved away from security to a place of abundance and freedom. 